The transport sector is changing quickly, and so is the technology used within it. However, this new engine design has really caught my attention. The way this engine works is really interesting, and if it does what it promises, it could make real changes to the transport sector. So let's look at how it works, how it could be used, and see if this is a game changer, or just some more snake oil. I'm Ryan, and welcome to Xeroth. This is the E-Rex engine from the company InEngine. It is claimed to be a one-stroke engine, though we'll get into that shortly. The key benefits of the E-Rex engine are that it is insanely light. In fact, InEngine say that a standard four-stroke engine with the same amount of power would be about four times as heavy and four times the size. This engine is also incredibly quiet and produces almost no vibrations. This lack of noise and vibration, combined with its small size, could make the E-Rex a real game changer. The way they've achieved this is pretty unusual, which becomes clear when we look inside the engine. The first thing you'll probably notice is that the pistons are arranged very differently to a standard vehicle engine, and that they push away from each other. This is called an opposed piston design. Also, the back of the pistons push on a wavy plate at either end, known as a swash plate, in turn causing it to rotate. The opposed pistons are very useful here because they make the engine much more efficient. This is because instead of the energy being lost to the top of the cylinder like it is in a standard engine where it generates excess heat, the energy can be instead used to push the opposite piston and do more useful work. Opposed engines are also much more balanced, which result in much lower vibrations. Types of opposed piston engines have been around for over 100 years, but the E-Rex engine is unique because of how it combines them with the swash plates. That being said, the general idea of a swash plate is also pretty well understood. They are commonly used in pumps or compressors for air conditioning, and have even been used in a number of different types of engines. This is the Duke engine, which actually rotated the whole array of pistons using a swash plate. However, the swash plate on the E-Rex engine is slightly different. Instead of being a slanted disc, the E-Rex swash plate has a wavy design, which enables a smoother cycle and minimizes vibrations further. The positions of each plate can also be adjusted. This makes each of the opposed pistons move slightly out of sync with each other, so they don't perfectly meet in the middle. This causes the fuel to be squeezed together less, and therefore less compressed. But why is this important? Well, different fuels like to be compressed by different amounts. Therefore, InEngine says the E-Rex could be optimized to run on whatever fuel you give it, making it ready for more sustainable fuel options like hydrogen. The issue with the wavy squash plate is that it requires rollers, and these could be a failure point during repeated use. But what about this engine makes it a one-stroke, instead of a four-stroke like in most cars, or a two-stroke which is commonly used in dirt bikes? But before answering that, imagine enjoying your career as much as you enjoy unwinding on YouTube. That would be pretty cool, and it could be possible with the sponsor of this video 80,000 Hours. 80,000 Hours is a non-profit that provides free advice to help people find careers that are fulfilling and tackle the world's most important and pressing problems. The name 80,000 Hours comes from the average number of hours worked in a lifetime, and they have done over 10 years of research alongside academics at Oxford University into how to find a fulfilling career that does a lot of good. And it turns out, this might look pretty differently than what you might think. If you care about what the evidence says about having a fulfilling and impactful career, and want real advice for achieving this, then 80,000 hours can help. This advice could really change your life, and is completely free forever. As a non-profit, their only aim is to help solve global problems by helping people find the most impactful careers they can whatever that looks like. To get started planning a career that works on some of the world's most pressing problems, sign up below at 80,000hours.org slash Xeroth. Okay, so back to the E-Rex. Why is it called a one-stroke engine, and what is it going to be used for? The amount of strokes in an engine can be counted as the amount of times the piston changes direction 
between explosions of the fuel. Most engines are four-stroke or two-stroke, which can be counted in these animations. Therefore, a one-stroke engine would need an explosion to happen at each end of the piston. The company Ampere does have a design for this, and the working principles can be seen in this animation, where the explosion happens at each end of the piston. This gives us one change of direction between each explosion, and therefore, a one-stroke engine. However, this is clearly not what is happening in the E-Rex engine. So why does InEngine call this a one-stroke engine? Well, it's a marketing gimmick. More specifically, they say that they don't want people to think this is like a normal two-stroke engine. This is because it doesn't burn oil during its use, which causes unwanted emissions in standard two-stroke engines. I understand they wanted to stand out here, and maybe we would have never heard about this interesting engine at all if they had called it a two-stroke engine. But it is very similar to a diesel two-stroke opposed piston engine, just with an ignition system for the fuel, separate lubricating oil, and the swash plates. But the E-Rex engine has some more problems ahead. The main planned application of the E-Rex is actually in its name, the electric range extender. Instead of working against the electrification of transport, the E-Rex actually aims to help improve electric hybrid vehicles. Putting a small and quiet engine in a hybrid vehicle makes a lot of sense, because you don't want to feel the engine running in the background, or for it to take up too much room in the chassis. A prototype of the E-Rex engine has been created and shown running in an MX-5. However, the 500cc engine in the MX-5 is a pretty strange project, and again, I think another marketing gimmick. This is because the E-Rex was never designed to directly propel a car on its own. What's more, the video description says this uses no turbocharger, and runs completely on atmospheric pressure. However, there is clearly a supercharger connected to the engine. I can't find any concepts for getting an opposed piston engine to run without forcing air into it. And it doesn't look like InEngine has found a way either. The forced air is important, because there is no way for the pistons to push out the exhaust gas as they block the ports when they move. With forced air on the other hand, it can all be flushed through when the ports are open. Okay, so would I invest in this project? Well, I think the concept of a compact range extender with very little vibrations is very appealing, and they have created what appears to be a working prototype, which is promising. However, they have done some questionable marketing, which raises red flags. And they are using crowdsourcing rather than traditional investment strategies, which often have more checks in place. The possible issues with the rollers on the swash plate and lack of transparency about the supercharger are also not good. Because of this, I think I might invest some lunch money, but wouldn't want to risk anything bigger. Maybe if there was some more transparency about the systems and some more information about efficiency and power, I would increase this. But for now, I think lunch money's good. As you're still watching, please subscribe to the channel and check out some of my other videos because I think you might like them like this video on a breakthrough in hydrogen jet engines.